Hey, well, what do you know? I'm back. I just finished watching the Platoon video. I hope you found that at least funny at the end. And I have become acutely aware of my ums and uhs. So that's, that's my focus for today. Work on those ums and uhs and trying to eliminate them. Uh, as you can just hear, that will be tricky. But if I can maybe just cut those a bit every video, I think it'll make the presentation aspect better. I'm learning sort of the presenting slash talking over a video game thing on a fly, on the fly. Never done it before. Uh, sorry. So, um, oh boy, I'm just figuring out how hard this is. Uh, this is a, oh god, this is a, <laughs> this is a, Tricky habit to beat. Anyways, uh, today's theme is lineups and ratings. So what I will be doing is I will boot up a new game, much like last episode with the Platoons, quickly from scratch. And I will show you all how I would set up the lineup and also talk about the very basic ratings, what they mean and how they function within the game. Those ratings being things like contact, power, and eye for hitters, and stuff, movement, and control for pitchers. Because even then, even when you first boot up this game, you're like, I'm still not quite sure what that means or what stats they affect. So we will be doing that. I actually don't know what team I want to choose. I am interested in the... Hmm. I'm going to go with the Phillies. They had an interesting offseason. Some new faces in town. All right, I'm the Phillies. Simple as that. So two days before opening day, once again. And did you hear that little pause? I'm having trouble. We can see what kind of injuries we have. We got some relief pitching injuries. Jake Arrieta, not yet back. Jared Eikhoff, not yet back. Uh, shit. So... We will be making do. So one thing I am looking at, so this is how their lineup comes out of the box. Boy, you can hear me struggling with those ums. So let's go ahead and just click Cesar Hernandez, who in my opinion, and I say this as a Braves fan, one of the most underrated underrated players in the league and I'm sort of going to talk about what these stats mean so contact now I use a 20 to 80 scale and I would honestly recommend that um, shit that most <laughs> most of you try 20 to 80 it's what the game defaults to I can understand 0 to 100 but 20 to 80 is good because that's what scouts use in real life I don't know why but yeah 20 to 80 is normal normalized around 50 being the average so as you can see, his avoid Ks is 50. That means he's average at avoiding strikeouts in comparison to other major leaguers. So contact 55, so slightly above average at making contact at the very act of it. Gap power 50, so gap power is essentially your doubles and your triples too, to some extent. So you can see, you look at him, he's got 50 gap power, 30 home run power. So even though he's not particularly good at hitting the ball over the fence, with 50 gap power, he can still get some extra base hits, especially when you, and it's important to look at this with gap power, but gap power, 50 gap power, and you come over here, he's got 55 speed too, so he's not a slug around the base paths, so uh, expect doubles from him. So contact, as you can imagine, that affects uh, your, your batting average, it's how you're going to put balls into play. Uh, contact, looking at contact and avoid Ks is pretty important, that'll give you an idea yeah, a good, just a general good idea of how often you're going to put balls in play. I slash discipline is basically going to determine your walk rate. So yeah, pretty big, pretty simple, right? So we're gonna we're gonna see how this sort of reflects itself in his stats. So see, contact fifty five, his batting average last year with the Phillies two ninety four. So. Pretty good. You would guess someone with a 55 contact to have maybe 270 batting average. 
but but 294 is certainly within the realm of possibility. Gap power 50. That that has manifested itself in 26 doubles and six triples in 128 games. Very normal. Only 30 home run power, so uh, single digit home runs with nine. Exactly what you would expect. That eye discipline is 55. That's above average, and you can see that from 60 walks in 128 games, and that's actually given him a 374, sorry, 373 on base percentage last year. And we can see that batting average, and it also with the extra base hits, gave him 421 slugging, 793 OPS, 114 OPS plus. Yeah, good player. I mean, really good player. Um, so we are going to. Uh, so we've taken a look at Cesar Hernandez. Let's look at someone different. I want to look at. I believe you say his name, Reese. Reese Hoskins. Okay, completely different hitter in terms of makeup that we're looking at right now. So avoid K's is, is lower. He's he's a big power hitter. Big power hitters tend to strike out. Contact is 60, so he's actually slightly better at making contact. Gap power 55, so similar to Hernandez. But then you look at this home run power, and you see he's got 70. And he's got 60 I as well, so... You're talking about a guy who is overall a really solid hitter with the strikeouts only being his weakness. This is a guy you're going to expect to hit for average, get extra base hits with that 55 gap power, 45 speed. Uh, home run power, definitely there. He's going to hit a lot of home runs, and with that eye discipline, he's going to get on base as well, and that's manifested himself uh, in 2017. 18 home runs in 50 games. Great triple slash, 259 average, 396 OPP, 618 slugging. Fantastic. So how would I go about actually organizing this lineup? Uh, so this is my first time getting into the game with the Phillies. So I'm learning right along with you all. I Cesar Hernandez is hitting leadoff. Actually, here's what I'll do. I will clear the lineup, and I'll just make that easier. And I will also clear the depth chart. So, uh, if I recall correctly, Cesar Hernandez was hitting leadoff. I like the idea. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have him still hitting leadoff. We're gonna check his ratings. We can see he's not really particularly better against righties versus lefties. This, the numbers are different. Maybe a little yeah, a little better versus lefties, but also better discipline versus righties. Interesting, okay. So he's a slightly different hitter, but he's not really any better or worse. So having him in leadoff is fine. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit of how one constructs a lineup in 2018 in baseball. Traditionally, you would have your best hitter in the three spot, but a lot of new Saber metrics type folks with their daggum computers have suggested that the, actually the two spot and the four spot are most important. So uh, as a general rule, two spot and four spot are gonna be for very good hitters. Top of the order higher up is gonna be more on base percentage. Lower bits are going to be more focused on slugging percentage to drive in those runs. That hasn't changed. And then once you get to about six, seven, eight, it's just going to be in order of it's just going to be basically a who's left, and you're going to want to do uh, that in descending order so that you have your worst hitters towards the bottom of the lineup. Many people are actually hitting. I have to make sure I'm recording. Okay, many people are actually hitting uh, the pitcher in the eighth spot, and that is because. If you have a, a legit hitter in the ninth spot, it kind of gives you a better bridge into the top of the lineup. But I actually just leave the pitcher in the ninth spot. So we are going to quickly try to put together a lineup here because I already have just realized I've talked for 10 minutes and that's terrible. I'm, I'm working on making these uh, more concise. It's good to be concise. So in the two spot, I'm thinking a good hitter and I'm also thinking someone who can get on base. and 
for me, that has to be Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana is a fantastic hitter. His discipline, you can see with his eye of 70, the man just is an on-base machine. Often you'd have a fast player at the top of the order, but we're, we're same metrics. We're advanced. We're smart. We have big brains, and we have computers now. Okay. Three-hole. Three-hole, three-hole. I'm looking at uh, righties versus lefties, as you can see. Not a huge difference for him, either. Both switch hitters, so that's not surprising. Okay. For the three-hole, Michael Franco... Michael, sorry is what I'm looking at. And I think that may be who I go with. Hmm. Could also do a double Herrera. I think Michael Franco fits the bill. He's he's solid every way around. He's got some power. He can he's got some contact. I think he will be my three hitter to start the year. You can see the statistics hasn't been great, but I could uh, you could do worse than him in the three hole. Uh, I'm gonna check on his rating against righties. Yeah, he's fine. He's actually better against righties, so that's good. Uh, my four hole, no doubt in my mind, I want that to be Hoskins. Okay, so my five hole. I need a shortstop, and I th and J.P. Crawford's my guy. He hits the righties pretty well. Um, just maybe that little bit slightly better than he hits the lefties based on his gap power. I like the idea of putting him somewhere in the lineup. I'm not sure if I'd rather have him or Herrera. I think I would go for Herrera first. So Odubel Herrera will be my five hitter, JP Crawford will be my six. And then what positions have I not used yet? I need a right fielder and a catcher. So Nick Williams versus Aaron Alter. This may actually be a platoon situation. We'll see how it works out. So Alter. Pretty good against the lefties, a little bit better against the lefties. Nick Williams. No, I think it's just, I think it's just Altair. I think Altair just is my guy. Uh, we are going to go up here and we're going to set him to a right fielder. Not going to make a difference for him. He can play both competently. And in fact, I'm actually going to put him ahead of Crawford. And then to wrap it up, we have our catcher. Okay, have to decide between Alfaro and Knapp. So we're looking at rating versus righties. Just have a glance at those. We can see that Knapp is significantly better against lefties. Alfaro, uh, also better against lefties. So that makes things tricky. In times like this, it's uh, I would prioritize catcher defense. Catcher defense is very important in this game, and there'll be I'll do a video about setting up defense. But this, this we've set up our lineup for the first time. Terrific. What I'm actually going to do is I am going to copy this lineup, and I'm going to paste it against the lefties, and I'm going to clear this depth chart, and I'm going to rearrange this just a little bit more. Franco hitting up here is good. I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply switch, yeah, I'm going to switch Altair and Herrera in the order. Altair being the righty has an advantage over lefties that Herrera doesn't have. We can see that when we look at the stats. Here's the compare player screen. I'll show you that. Uh, what you can do is you can go up to any player, go compare player. And I'm going to select on my list of Philadelphia players, compare Odubel Herrera to Aaron Altair. And we can see their batting ratings. And versus left-handed pitching, specifically, we can see that Herrera has, has better contact by five, but... Altair, much better power, much better eye, just a more solid hitter against the lefties. 
So having him in the five spot's cool. These two are fine up top. They're going to get on base no matter what. So yeah, that's that's how I would set up the lineup, at least at a quick glance. Now to set up the depth chart. I like having... So I, I'm going to put Quinn. Quinn is a center fielder. Center field is a hard position to play. So he'll back up. And then Nick Williams will back up the corner spots. Kingery can play a bunch of places, I actually think. Yeah, he's kind of a jack of all trades. Um, I'll I'll have him backing up second base for now, and I'll have Florimon doing third and short. The reason for that is I'm just looking at it. He's got more range in his infield, and his arm is better. But like I said, defensive ratings will be another video. Andrew Knapp naturally will back up as he's the only other catcher. And backing up the first baseman, we don't have uh, an extra first baseman, but basically anyone can do it. So it's going to be, for me, it's going to be either Nick Williams or Scott Kingery. And that is just a matter of who can hit better against right-handed pitching. Because first base is the easiest position to play and pretty much anyone with a pulse can play it. So we're going to go compare again. And we're going to pick, compare Scott Kingery to Nick Williams. And we are looking at their numbers versus right-handed pitching. Okay, so advantage in contact for Williams, advantage in power for Williams, advantage in eye for Williams. So that makes things pretty simple. Okie dokie. All right. That is pretty simple. I think Nick Williams as my pinch hitter makes sense. I'm looking at Florman's speed and stealing. Right now I'm looking at Kingery's speed and stealing. Nap, I usually will not list a catcher as a pinch hitter or a pinch runner. Roman Quinn, Roman Quinn, as you can see, so I clicked on him. Great speed, stealing base running. He's going to be my go-to pinch runner. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually put Scott Kingery for both because he's decent at both. Yeah. Okay, dope. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy this depth chart versus right hand pitching and paste it in. And the only thing I'm really going to do is I'm going to actually make Kingery my backup for the first baseman against left-handed pitching. And the reason for that is when I compare him to Nick Williams, it's uh, actually an advantage for Kingery, albeit a small one, at least from those three stats we have available to us. So yeah. Uh, and, and, and as a result, I'm actually going to make him the priority pinch hitter. So yeah, that's how I would set up the lineup. Pretty simple. So I've, I've just to review, we've talked about what contact, gap power, home run power. I and Boyd Case mean we've talked about these speed stats at least a little bit in the context of pinch running and also uh, how that can benefit things like gap power, how it can help make singles, doubles, and doubles, triples. We'll talk about defense some other time. So that will do it for the lineup side of things. Gonna look at the pitching. Gonna look at the pitching. Okay. So here's the current rotation. No doubt, just by using your fucking eyeballs, Aaron Nola is the ace. He is uh, an amazing pitcher in real life and also in the game. Just to do a quick review of what these three stats mean, stuff is gonna be your strikeouts. Uh, as well as just generally your, your hit ability, how many swinging strikes you're going to get. Uh, movement being uh, for home run prevention. And control being uh, preventing walks. So he's above average in all of these. So you see he's got good stuff. Of course he has good stuff. He strikes out about 10 batters in, an inning, uh, in a, every 9 innings. Movement's good. Great only allows, you know, about a home run every nine innings. That's still pretty good. Control, great. Yeah, I mean, he, does, he walks two and a half people per nine innings, so fantastic. 
you look at the pitches too, he's got a great curveball. That's his strong suit. For a starting pitcher, you're going to want three plus pitches, and Aaron Nola has legitimately four, so he's a force to be reckoned with, and the stamina's there too, 65. So we're just going to take a quick look. It's without Arietta and Eikhoff, it's it's a real bummer. <laughs> <laughs> it is a real bummer. Uh, but we will try to at least set it up for their return. So this is gonna we're gonna do a, we're gonna go five man rotation for this, I think. Looking at Hutchinson, not great movement, but he's got he's got plus, he's got a plus pitches. Like his his slider's fantastic. So that makes me like him. Pavetta has got a great fastball. But that movement is really poor. I don't like that 35 movement at all. 35 movement, that's that's a dangerous game to be playing when with with the home run environment the way it is. Like you even if you can do other aspects of the game well, you're in trouble. Lively the pitches aren't as exciting. That kind of goes without saying, but he's got he's got control. He's not gonna walk anybody. And uh, definitely minimizing walks is great and then Velasquez Velasquez also those movement problems so it, it just quickly eyeballing it like I I would actually go Hutchinson in the two spot um, and then maybe I don't like Velasquez's 30 movement yeah I would probably set it up something like that it's not a, there's not really much of a difference between these four guys but obviously Aaron Nola has to go first uh, setting up the bullpen. Do you see? So, do so you see these primary roles right here? I'm gonna go ahead and say, don't use a closer. There's no point in using a closer if you have your best pitcher. Don't limit him to the ninth inning. Okay, if he pitches a great eighth inning, it's just as good. It's just as valuable, really. So, what I actually love to use is the stopper role, which is now available by default. You actually have to go into the menu and turn this on. The stopper role will allow you to basically have a guy who pitches late in the game. It's similar to the closer role, but it, it, it offers more flexibility. So that's why it's good. And stoppers generally are going to have high stuff. Relief pitchers are generally going to have high stuff in general, but you can see this guy is pretty great. I mean, he's got 75 stuff. He's got actually three pitches he can work with. So I like the idea of having him as a stopper. I'm looking for other good candidates for stoppers. Okay, I like Adam Morgan. Yeah, so I'm gonna have him as my other stopper. It's good to have a, it's a decent idea to have a lefty stopper and a righty stopper. So I'm just gonna have him set up like this eighth and close game, seventh and close game. They handle the late game. Uh, yeah, the fact that they have low stamina is good too because they're not gonna be asked to be pitched too many innings. They're gonna be pitching a high leverage innings. But it, so um, I'm going to go ahead and have these two converted to middle relief. Is there anyone here with a good bit of stamina? No. Okay, they're all they're all pretty low stamina. You 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 will run into a lot of these relievers who have 50, 60, even even up to 80 stamina, and they'll be relievers because, as you can see, most of them really only have two plus pitches. Like this guy's got a 50 changeup, but even then, like he has, his bread and butter is that fastball slider combo. Uh, Hobie Milner, he's really only got one plus pitch. And this guy is limited by his stamina. Uh, that's what, kind of what's preventing him from being a starter. Because as you can see, the, the pitches are there, but 30 stamina, that's not going to get you a starting spot. So having all these guys in middle relief is cool by me. I think I might make another one a stopper. And I have to decide who that is. It's going to be this guy, just because he looks solid. So, yeah. Just have a variety of usage options. Mirror relief, normal, normal usage. I'm actually going to have Hobie Milliner set up as a lefty specialist, as will I have Adam Morgan, just because they are lefties. And uh, yeah. So that's exactly how I would set up a team. Uh, setting up pitch counts, Aaronola, 65 stamina. I'd probably give them. Uh, well, if I was Gabe Kapler, I'd give him 68, but I'm not Gabe Kapler, so I'm going to give him about 100, 100 start to year. You could bump that up 
as the year progresses, but I think 100 is okay. That's a very hard cap. Usually if you have set it at 100, they'll be taking it around, out at around 92, 95-ish. Uh, Hutchinson, these guys are decent, but I'm actually just going to leave them at 90. I like the idea of making the bullpen sort of... Well, the bullpen's not really that great either. It's a, it's a rough scene. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to give these guys... Yeah, I think 90 is okay. You don't want them pitching too deep into the games. They're not that great. If they get around the order twice, just try to limit the bleeding. So that's sort of my logic. What if? Yeah. So that's my logic. If I'm setting up on a brand new save with a brand new team, that's how I would set up uh, my lineups. I haven't really done the DH stuff. Uh, trust me, it would probably just be like I would. I would probably just take Williams and put him in the field, and I would just make Hoskins the DH. Uh, pretty simple. So yeah, that is how I would set up a brand new team. As the season progresses, I might tinker with the lineup a bit. So for instance, if Franco continues to struggle, he will drop the lineup. Maybe Altair or Herrera do very well. They can go up to the three spot. But yeah, that's that's my thinking. Obviously, Arietta would enter the rotation as the number two pitcher. Eikhoff probably is number three. Nishak would definitely be up there, and he would... He would be a very good stopper. He's a great reliever. So, shame we couldn't quite set those guys up, but that's probably a more realistic thing anyways to come into the season with those kind of injuries. You're you're rarely going to be at full strength. There's always going to be someone hurt. So, yeah, hopefully we've learned about some of the basic ratings for pitchers and hitters, as well as setting up your bullpen, your starting rotation, and your lineups against right-handed pitchers and left-handed pitchers. So that is going to do it for this. I have talked for nearly half an hour. Uh, yeah, we'll work on conciseness. I stopped being conscious of my ums and uhs, but hopefully those have gotten better. All right, well, I will talk to you guys next time for my next tutorial. Uh, peace.